share today about leadership according to the vision of the Bible. And why I say leadership according to the vision of the Bible is because I am going to stay very general. Because I know that a lot of people, they understand differently how to set up a leadership. But in our church today, we are in a time where we need to rethink and rediscover what is leadership. Not according to a denomination, not according to a religious standard, but according to what the Bible says. And the first question that I'm going to answer, this was not a direct question, but this is a question that I heard many times when I'm teaching in Bible college, is do we need leadership? And a lot of people, you know, question that a lot. And I myself question that so many times because the problem is that most of the time when we are talking about leadership, what we get reference to is not actually leadership according to God. It's leadership according to a human construction that we call the church. So what is leadership? What is authority? Do we need authority in the church? The answer is yes, yes, and amen. Okay? I say yes, yes, amen. amen. Okay, can you say yes, 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 yes and amen? Yes. Maybe you cannot say it because you believe that this is not true. And I understand if you believe that this is not true. But the fact is nothing on earth, created by the Father, goes with that an authority who is placed. When God created the world, the entire planet, what the Bible say? He gives authority to Adam and Eve. He gives them authority and he say, okay, you are going to rule over all the creation. This might be my body. Yeah, 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 you did well. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. So, from the beginning, we can realize that God established authority. It's from the beginning. This is before sin. Okay? The beginning is before sin. Satan did not screw all the creation yet. It's like marriage. Marriage is an institution that has been created by God even before sin happened. So, you know, all the things who have been created before sin, they were pure and perfect. So, in a pure and perfect world, God decided to give authority to the mankind. You know, I'm a very ecologic guy. I love ecology. But again, when people say that man has nothing to do on the planet, we should get rid of man uh, to be more green, it's stupid. Because ecology is very good as long as it's staying in God's standard. When God gave authority to Adam, he, he, he told Adam and Eve, you are going to take care of this garden and you are going to expand this garden all around the world. He gives them an authority. And uh, when we did uh, the seminar about leadership with some of the people here a few months ago, we were talking about authority. And we were talking about sphere of authority. And maybe I will take some time to talk about the sphere of authority one day here. But this, the whole idea of God creation is based on the principle of authority. And authority is not bad. Amen? Amen. Amen. Can you tell with me, authority is not bad. Authority is not bad. 
but there is some bad authority. Oh yeah. The fact is, there is some bad authority, but the principle of authority is not bad. It's a good principle that has been established by God Himself at the beginning, before Satan entered the world. Okay? So this is my first point. Authority is not bad. Now, when we are talking about authority in the church, most of the time we are not talking about authority as a principle, we are talking about a hierarchy. And I can tell you, hierarchy is not God's plan. Definitely, God established authority, He never established hierarchy. Hierarchy came long after the, the, the word become bad because of Satan. Hierarchy is what human beings have been trying to implement because the old notion of God authority was wrong. You know, one day the prophet Samuel come to God and man, the prophet Samuel was very upset. He come to God and say, God, look at those people, your people, the one that you set free from Egypt. You know what? Do you know the last thing that they has? They want a king. What was the answer of God? The one again? Give them one. They want it? Give them one. Don't worry, Sam. Where are you? Sam, don't worry. Okay, this guy here is Samuel. Okay, the prophet. Sam, don't worry. They do not rebuke you, they rebuke me. This was the answer of God. When Sam the prophet came and says they want to build a hierarchy, they want to have a kingship, they want to have a king on the top of them, they want to have nobles, they want to have generals, they want to have all this crap like all the nation are doing. The Lord answer was, they are rebuking me, they are forsaking me, not you. Hierarchy is an attempt from men to build authority with that God. Well, you know maybe in a few years you can be thrown to jail saying this kind of sense. But not yet. So I'm going to take a chance to keep on going and sharing what I believe the Lord is telling us for. Hierarchy is not the way that God wants to build the church. And it's very interesting. When you see before the kingship of Israel, how God was doing. He was taking someone, he was anointing him, and we have been learning that anointing is when God gives you a portion of his authority. He was anointing someone, and he was anointed by God to do the job of the kingdom of God. Deborah, uh, Samson, call them, you know, all the judge. They were anointed by God. They get something special from God to stand and to do the job. And basically, God was the one who chose them on his own. He didn't have a held a meeting and just say, okay, we are going to be the next pastor of the church. I'm not going to to to, to be on, on this level because you know this is just not godly. This is not just godly. It's, it's something so human, so carnal. And most of the time we try to build the church like you build a company. Who is going to be the CEO? We call it pastor, whatever. Who is going to be the CEO of the church? God. This is only entitled to ask for this chair. We need to understand that before Israel chose kings, God was the one who appointed people 
one after another to become the one who are going to be used by him with his strength and power to accomplish his perfect will for the people of Israel. Amen? Amen. Is that biblical? Amen. Yeah. After the first king, who chose the first king? God. You know, Samuel didn't say, Oh God, you know, I know a guy is big, strong, handsome, good family. Maybe we can pick up this guy. Because if Samuel says that, we should say, okay, it was not a good king. Samuel didn't make it well. But actually, this is not what's happened. God said, okay, you are going there, there is a guy called Saul. And you are going to anoint him for a king. They want a king, let's give them a king. They ask for a king, they ask for another leadership, that the leadership of God, the result was Saul. A catastrophe. After Saul, they had David. A man according to the heart of the Lord. Hallelujah. Again, very good guy. Back. When the time was for him to be on the battlefield with his army, he was on his rooftop, watching Bathsheba having a bath. Adultery, murder, lies, go live. And God took this man because he had a humble heart and raised him again. And when this man said, Oh Lord, I want to build you a temple. The Lord said, No, I don't need a temple. Oh Lord, yes, I want. You know, I live in a palace and you live in a tent. This is not good. I'm sorry, but just saying that Show us how David was not that far, you know? Do you really believe that God was camping? Hello? He was not camping. God is God. Everything is in Him. But He wanted to build a temple. God didn't want a temple. And He told David, I, I, God, I will build you a house. I will build you a house. And God wants to be a part of everything we do. He don't want us to just decide for Him. But we got the temple. And God is so good that He decided to show His presence in the temple. The Shekinah of God came in the temple and He touched. But this was not perfect plan of God again. Then after we arrive in the New Testament, and here is one of the big mystic, one of the funny one of the New Testament. Jesus said to the disciple, guys, I'm going to the Father. I want you to stay in Jerusalem and wait. Wait for what? Wait for what my Father in heaven promised you, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is coming upon you. Is coming. Wait. Be patient. Stay in Jerusalem. Seek God's face. Praise. Worship. Pray. And the Holy Spirit will come. In the first book of Acts, what we see is uh, people getting having a elder meeting. Uh, Peter, you remember we read something in the Bible? At this time, they just had the Old Testament. And they say, We read that somebody has to take the place of the one who betrayed us. We should pick up someone. What is crazy is nobody said, Hey, Jesus said to wait. Not to pick up someone. And you know how they pick him up? I'm going to show you.
<laughs> you again. <laughs> Every time when I have to pick up someone, it's so tall. Come here. Yeah, you too. This is a two euro coin. Okay? You are the younger, you are going to choose. Face or heads or tails? Heads or tails. Head or tails. Head or tails. Head or tails. Heads or tails. Okay, <laughs> what do you want? Tails? Man, you are an apostle now among the twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you cannot be. God decide. This is exactly what they need. Can you believe it? The, the 11 guys who walk with Jesus for three years. And this is how they pick up one of them? You can see it, Apostle. <laughs> <laughs> this is craziness. This is craziness. The only thing that Jesus told them, wait. God is going to do the job. God is going to send you the Holy Spirit. God is going to, to, to mandate someone. Actually, I know that a lot of people disagree with me when I say that. But I really believe that the one who was supposed to take the place of Judah was Paul. But nobody wants to wait. Nobody wants to, to, to be led by the Lord, even if they say, we want to be led by you. They have no clue of what it is to be led by the Lord. So they play with a coin to know who is going to be the next one. They did it in a way which was a normal way for the whole Testament. Yeah, in the whole testament, they were doing this kind of thing. They call it the Turim and the Purim. This was their way to, to search God's will. But in the New Testament, we are supposed to be on another page. We are supposed to have the Holy Spirit in us, living in us, to make good decisions. But the problem is they made this choice before the Holy Spirit had a chance to come and to speak. Thanks God. He is so passionate for this. But you know, it's very interesting about this apostle they choose. You find this guy only in those two verses. Before, we never heard of him. After, we will never heard of him. It's just mentioned in those two verses in the Bible. I'm sure he was a good guy. No wonder. I'm sure he was a good guy. He, he'd been walking with Jesus, him too, you know, for all those time. But, but basically, he was the result of a carnal mindset. And when it comes to choose leadership, in a local church. Most of the time, we are just carnal-minded set. We need to change the way that we approach leadership in the church. Now, we are going to be a little bit about teaching, you know. What the Bible say about leadership in the New Testament church? Very easy. Basically, the Bible is talking about two types of leader in the local church. Two types. The elders and the deacon. Most of the time, but you're very polite so you don't want to interrupt me, but when you're in a Bible college, you know, they are used to question, oh, but what about the fivefold ministry? They are not church leaders. And here is a big issue. You know, at the beginning, a lot of people, when I was coming in, and some, I love them, they keep on saying that, but every time I have to say, don't call me a pastor. I am Mikael. 
Don't call me a pastor. It's like if I uh, I look uh, to to a brother and say, Hey, blue eyes. Why do you call me blue eyes? Oh, yeah, blue eyes. Yeah, but it's not my name. My name is Mika. It's not blue eyes or green eyes. Okay, don't call me. Don't call me on something that is just a gift that I'm carrying. Pastor is not a title. Actually, in the Bible, the two official titles was elder and deacon. Pastor is a very modern invention. The Bible is talking about the fivefold ministry, but basically when it comes to leadership, the Bible is just talking about elder and deacon. And this is something that I love. If any of you aspire to be an overseer or a leader in the church, you have set your heart toward a noble ambition for the word is true. Basically, Paul is talking to Timothy and saying, okay, if among the people in the community, some people want to be overseer, want to be leaders, want to, to be uh, proactive in the life of the church, by being an overseer or a leader, their aspiration is noble and good. Then after, Paul is describing, and you all know the, the same, a man who wants to do such a thing must to be, you know, not a young Christian, not a young converted, in not an alcoholic, he must have only one wife, he need to have order in his home, he need to, and all the things that Paul is describing as a standard of being a leader. Among those standards, it's very interesting, Paul, who knows a lot about the fivefold ministry, he, he, he wrote about them, Paul said nothing. He didn't say that the leader has to be a pastor, an apostle, an evangelist, a teacher, a prophet. No, he said the standard to be a leader is to be honest, to practice hospitality, to have order in his home, to raise his children according to God, to have only one wife, to be gentle, to don't go for dispute. This is the standard. He's not talking about one of the fivefold ministry gifts. Wow. Interesting, yeah? Mm. Because leadership and the fivefold ministry gift have nothing to do. Basically, we can assume that most of the leader of the church should be able to operate in one of those fivefold gifts, or maybe not. One of the gifts of the Spirit is the gift of leadership, government. It's interesting. Some people may, may be just annoyed to be the official leader of a sire, maybe the official guy who govern, who do everything it takes for the church to be, and he may not be a pastor. I met so many pastors who have no leadership gift, but they are great pastors or shepherds. I know so many evangelists who ended to be called pastor in the church, and they have no shepherd heart. We made big mistakes for a long time because we believe that we are going to build the church. 
But the Bible says that Jesus is the one who built the church. So we try to do things by ourselves. And we try to, to, to give titles to people and believe because you give a title to someone is going to be good. But there is no title. When you take the ministry, the fivefold ministry, there are gifts. No title. When we read in Ephesians 4, chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, and he has appointed some with grace to be apostle, and some with grace to be prophet, and some with grace to be evangelist, and some with grace to be pastor, and some with grace to be teacher. And their calling is to nurture and prepare all the holy believer to do their own works of ministry. And as they do this, they will enlarge and build the body of Christ. This is a translation from what we call the Passion Translation. And this is the most accurate translation according to the Greek. Not the one on the screen, but the one that I just read. This is the most accurate translation of these verses. Why do you have such a bad system of leadership in churches for so long? We do have that because we still enchain with the first official established church, which is the Church of Constantine. When Constantine created the Roman Catholic Apostolic Church, he never built it on the Apostle. He built the church on the system. The first bishop of the Roman Empire were basically the consul who become bishop because of the Roman Catholic Church become the official church of the Empire. And the Roman Empire was known for something very strong, is hierarchy. Everything was so well organized, not just in the army, not just in the legion, but everywhere. The Romans were the first who created um, a system to register every baby was born with his parents, the name, you know, what we, we have everywhere on the planet today. This was a Roman invention. They were so well organized, so much in the hierarchy system, that they were maintaining a huge empire together. But who is that God? And this is a system when most of the evangelical church today are building their leadership. We still have this system. It's almost in our DNA. This is the way that we want to function. This is the way that we want to do it. But this is not the way that God planned to do it from the beginning. So you see, at the beginning, they asked for a king. And then, they built a system in the New Testament, which is exactly based on the same basic hiding of hierarchy. You know what? This system does not work. This system never works. And this is why there were so many abuse of authority, even in the Church of Christ. 
Thanks God for your passion. In the whole testament we can see that there were some kings who were better than others. But we don't find one king who never failed. Some were very bad. Akrat, for example, my goodness. Some were better. David. Some start very well and end it crazy. Solomon. Why? No kings in the Old Testament never match the standard of God. Because they were choose based on a hierarchy system, a carnal mind system. Today, we are living exactly in the same place. And this is why we have so many abuse in the church. And I don't speak about the, the, the institutional church, the Catholic church, or no, I'm speaking about our evangelical church. How many abuse do you see in the church every day? How many misleading? How many abusing authority? This is not what we want. So the two points where we have official name for leaders is basically elders and deacon. And sometimes people want to build a hierarchy even between those two. It's like if you want to build a hierarchy between uh, uh, a surgeon and a mechanic. It's stupid. When you need a heart transplantation, you don't go to the mechanic. And when you need to check the battery on your car, you don't go to the surgeon. You go to the mechanic when you need mechanic, you go to the surgeon when you need the surgeon. This is why God is speaking about the fivefold ministry. He say, hey guys, if you need a pastor, go to a pastor. Go to someone who's a shepherd at heart. He's going to take care for you. He's going to nutrition. you. He's going to... To, to be sure that your heart is healed. But you know, if you need salvation, maybe the pastor is not the best guy to do that. Go to the evangelist. And when you need to be disciple, maybe the best way to do it is to go to the teacher. And if you need a word of leading in your soul, and if you need to you get clear uh, clarity in your life. Maybe you can talk to the, the prophet. Maybe he will give you a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. And if you need to be sent, maybe you need to be sent by an apostle. This is why God is telling us. It's not everybody is an apostle. It's not everybody who is an evangelist. Yes, everybody can witness the gospel and, and bring people to the Lord. Definitely. It does not make you to be an evangelist. Maybe you have a word of prophecy one day or another or a word of knowledge. It doesn't make you to be a prophet. What make you to... We are all called to serve God. And what I like in the version by read of Ephesians is that basically, and their calling is to nurture and prepare all the holy believers to do their own work of ministry. Most of the time, we have been making clubs of ministry. You know, I remember one day in a conference, I went and I, I was going to sit in a table, and uh, a lady come, oh no, this table is, is, is for the minister. Oh, sorry. Didn't know, not beaten. Just seem to admire. It's for the minister. They want to be together. <laughs> they are not good enough. The fact is, I was one of the teachers who were teaching in the afternoon. 
but because I never tried to look like a minister, she didn't thought that I may be a part of that. Especially at this time with my ponytail and my earring. You cannot be a minister if you know, you have a ponytail and everything. You know what? I love when people don't realize that I am a minister. Am I a minister? Yes. Yes. I've been a minister for many years. Do I get any glory of it? No. Because I know that my ministry is just a gift. It's not it's not something special. It does not make me someone special. It just make, make me someone with a gift and a responsibility. And now I'm going to quote someone which is not in the Bible. It's in Spider-Man <laughs> from Marvel. With big gift come big responsibility. Spider-Man. <laughs> now you can throw stone if you want, you know. <gasps> the pastor has been cutting Marvel! Sorry. Right. One of the things that I want to say now, and I'm going to finish with this. How can you know, how can you decide, how can you pick up ministers? How do you know? There is one thing in the New Testament telling us about that. And I'm going to read it in the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 2. While they were worshipping as priests before the Lord in prayer and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, I have called Barnabas and Saul to do an important work for me. Now release them to go and to fulfill it. Basically, they were praising and worshiping. They were all together. The Bible says they were fasting because they want to hear God. They were basically not fasting to know who was the next to be sent. No, they were fasting all together because they wanted to hear God speak. And because they were all fasting together, listening to the Lord, worshipping. The Bible says they were ministering to the Lord as priests. As they were doing that, the Holy Spirit came and said, I have called Paul and Barnabas for a special task. I have appointed them for a special task. So I want you, the elders, not to be his spiritual blanket. You know, I, I, I just hate this whole idea of who is your spiritual covering? My spiritual covering is the blood of Jesus. Yeah, but, but what about the authority who sent you? Okay, I have been sent. People have been praying for me. Release me in my, in my ministry. Release me, release me in different places where I went and minister. Yeah. But it does not make me to be under them on the Spirit. I am under the Spirit of the Lord. And when you start to walk on this path, Suddenly you will find yourself getting more and more and more submit to your parents. Not to a system, but to your parents. You know what? I have been ministering in this local church, in this local body for 18 months, maybe two years. On a regular basis for at least 18 months. And I recognize amongst you people who are 
deacon, people who are elders. We don't need to make announcement. I, I can just scrutinize some of you in this thing, in this gift. And you know what? I have been ministering and I've been a church planter for something like 35 years. But when I'm coming here, even if I consider this church like my local church, when I'm coming here, I'm submitting to Darren because he's the one who got the, the key, the spiritual key of this body, not the, the key of the door. Many people get the key of the door. Now. But Darren, he is the one who has been shepherding this church for nearly two years. And he did a great job. When it comes to praise and worship, I'm ready to submit to the worship team because I love the whole concept of this worship team. One day we'll be sharing, we will lead the worship, and then I enjoy to worship. And, and she's a real leader. And sometimes it's deep, and I enjoy when it's deep. I am submit to their sphere of authority. Now, in this church, even if I have been a church mentor and apostle, I never considered myself as an apostle to this church. Because I didn't plant this church. And I've been exercising my ministry as a teacher to this church for 18 months. Am I a teacher? Am I an apostle? Am I an evangelist? Who cares? These are just gifts. You are not honored because you receive a gift. But you should be honored when you are exercising your gift. So when Sharon is leading the worship, we all should honor her for the gift in her. We should all submit to her authority as she is leading us in the presence of the Lord. And tomorrow if Sharon is asking us to dance, we need to dance. Because I trust that God called her to, to release with her gift the will of God. And even if you don't want to see me dancing, because I may look like a beer, but I will dance. Because I will submit, and I will have reverence, and I will have honor, and I will have a culture to honor the one who is exercising his gift. I want to honor Darren because he's been serving in his gift. And I can tell you, I see the anointing of God on his life. And I know it's not easy. And I know that sometimes, you know, it's just like, oh, I want to run away. But every Sunday I see him here. Every Sunday he's here. And I'm sure that if you ask him, do you want to be here every Sunday? I'm sure they will say, some of them, I really didn't want to be here. But I can't because I received the gift and I'm using it for the kingdom. I know some people are so anointed amongst this body. I'm just impressed by so many people in this body. This is why I'm so proud to say, you are my church. Not my church like I own you, but the church I belong to. You are my church. And I'm so proud of every one of you who have been faithful. Oh, maybe sometimes you, you don't feel good. Sometimes you feel upset. Sometimes you feel wounded. Sometimes you just feel like staying in your bed in the morning. 
So what? You know how to decide who is going to be a leader among us? By the fruit, by the fruit that people are bearing. What kind of fruit? If you bear the fruit of the Spirit, you will have order in the home. You will not be an alcoholic. You will not be going to every dispute every day. You will be full of kindness and, and full of the Spirit of the Lord. And this qualify you to be among the leaders. Now, we are not going to, and I, I really pray that never again this church will go back to the old system of having a hierarchy. There is people that you can follow when they are in their sphere of authority. And there is some other people that just want to be leaders. They just want to be the boss. They want to be recognized. Don't follow them. Don't follow those who just want to have a title. And embrace the people that the Lord is going to send you. If they walk in humility. If they walk with the spirit of service. We are going to share the communion now. And you know, it's very interesting because when it comes to communion, in the whole testament there is a very interesting story. When God asked Moses to pick up and to raise Aaron and his son to be priests, to give them an authority and a special anointing, He said, Aaron and his son are going to lay hand on this uh, oath. No, uh, what do you call it in English? You know, basically, they lay hand on this animal, they sacrifice the animal, and they lay hand to give their seed to this. Oxen. 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 When they did that, the Bible mentioned just after, like this, they will eat what have been serving for them to be appointed as priests. And I believe that this is exactly what happened with the communion. When we are sharing the bread and the wine, basically, we acknowledge that we are not serving because we are good, but like we read it before we are serving because by grace we have been called so so i'm going to ask darren to come and pray for the bread and i'm going to ask rosalina to come to pray for the wine and i just invite all of you as you will take the bread and the wine to say father I commit myself to enter in the authority that you give me and to serve you with all my heart, all my strength, and all my soul. Bless you. Lord Jesus, we 